the colors is really amazing. This is one of my ultimate favorite. This is a variegated bilite. These tropical plants give us the sense that if you take care of one plant, it will actually flourish and thrive and it will show back to you. It's actually just produced a beautiful leaf in here. It looks marvelous, look at that. It, this will actually grow a meter long of elongated, variegated leaf. It's really, really nice. You can talk to them if you want to, and they can actually respond to it if you just listen to them. My name is Dexter Burgos. I'm a horticulturist and a tropical plant collector. My mom was a soil scientist, and my father is an agronomist, and they love collecting plants. And that sort of brought my interest with plants in the Philippines. When I was a kid, I started with bamboo and then grew up with um, and then palm trees, anthuriums, um, orchids, and then now aroids. That enthusiasm with growing plants uh, pushed me to pursue the degree in horticulture. Went to university and met Ruby, my wife. She was taking up molecular plant pathology then. And so we continue that sort of passion of collecting while in the Philippines building family. These plants are aroids that are typically, you can see them in the forest, uh, growing on the uh, terrestrial or climbing up the, the trees. These plants are in tropical areas. It's a warm condition, humid. Um, it's always wet and it's, it's raining and there's a lot of light as well, and there's no distinct season between rainy or, or sunny. Most of the Filipino moms or dads, they, they like um, taking care of these plants and bring them inside. Surround yourself with beautiful things, and um, yeah, you just you, you, you learn the beautiful side of, of life while, while you do it. It felt like I know what I need to know when it comes to horticulture in the Philippines. And so I thought I need uh, another place at the same time, a, a good place to, to start a family. So I applied as a landscape gardener in Perth. So while I was away for five years, um, Ruby was an associate scientist for International Rice Research Institute. She was doing a lot of laboratory work. And at the same time, she was mothering our daughter, Roxy, who was four years old. I've got a chance to go home every now and then. And so our second child, our son, came along. And eventually, after five years, I was able to convince them to move to Australia with me. We don't have an extended family here, and so these plants sort of gave us um, a sense of belongingness or connection to our families in the Philippines. It was a bit of a challenge knowing that there's not a lot of tropical plants here in Australia. I mean, there is some tropical plants, but they're not the, the ones that we, we like to collect. And so um, we had to import these plants from the Philippines. At the start, we are actually just um, collecting these plants and not, not for business, but then due to a lot of popular requests by people that you know, need to share your collection and all that. And we feel the need to share this to people anyway, because um, we've, we've done the hard part of, of putting them to quarantine, leaving them for, for five months inside the quarantine facility. And so um, bringing, having it here already is, is an easy uh, access for, for people that are wanting to collect that, which almost impossible for them to collect it before, before us. Social media has, has helped us a lot get, get noticed by, by people um, putting your nice plants in there and that actually brought the attention of a lot of, of collectors. I mean, you have a rare plant, the way to propagate the cultural practice is to cut them and wait for a new shoot to come out. And it would take months or even maybe half a year before you can get a, a proper plant out of it. And so with the demand of people asking us that, you know, you have to share your, your collection. So we started looking at some things to, to efficiently share it with people. And so we thought, it shouldn't be that hard for us to set up our own laboratory and 
make some tissue culture for these people that are wanting to get a hold of those, those plant collection. We were looking for a product that would suit our, our need to propagate quickly and well, we cannot find anything in, in the market that would suit us. And so we thought we'd just make our own, own product, um, formulate our own formulation for the hormones and, and use them. It took us maybe six months to get the proper formulation with trial and error, but then the results were actually really good. Normally when you propagate, you'll probably get one shoot out of it. When you cut the top and then wait for the bottom plant to give out a shoot, you'll just get one shoot. But with this hormone that we have formulated, you can get five shoots out of it, or even six, or even more. The variegated bilite is, I would say there's a, there's a less than 100 in Australia, um, but not, not on, on this size. Um, maybe you, you get a you know, small baby um, for about you know, five grand if, if you, you get lucky. Um, but um, for this size, it, you know, you're probably looking at around 20 grand. Another one of our favorite is this Philodendron Florida Beauty. As you can see, the leaves are, are very different. It's, it looks almost like an animal or a dragon or something like that. But this is also another uh, variegated leaf. So you get a bit of different of variegation on every leaf. This one's got more variegation and that one's more, got more green. It's actually the variety of them that gets me into them and loving the different shapes and the color. It's very much the, the same story as, as my parents. It's, um, my mom is a soil scientist, my dad's an agronomist, and they love collecting. I just come to realize about it um, earlier that, well, that's the uh, same story as, as us. It's like, yeah, love collecting and then eventually become a business. I think I'm, I'm gonna keep, keep collecting until, um, until I collect them all, even though um, I don't have the space to, <laughs> to collect them. <laughs>